So this is what you call a real sheep farmer now. Top <laughs> Welcome to Sheep School. Today we're in, we're on tour. We're in a sheep farmer's place just up the road from me. We are having a look at a different setup, a different operation today. So I'm going to give you a look at around at his sheds, maybe at a sheep, and we'll have a chat with him. So this is Frank. Frank Fagan, my name is Farmer in Old Castle. And uh, so a full time farmer, keep about 900 joes. Across an easy clear runs into the floppy yos we have. Well, the way the oil price has gone, we're just trying to get away from shearing completely. We're shearing twice a year, so uh, trying to lower the cost. Are you winter shearing? So you're actually shearing summer and winter? Summer and winter, but That's yeah. a fair cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I find it bad shearing once a year. Yeah, but once the, the, the bad few sheep I have, yeah, the few, the few sheep I have, I know I have a bill of fifteen hundred for yeah. shearing the sheep. Yeah. It's a big expense, so the easy care of sheep. Yeah, will helpfully reduce your shear and eventually. Yeah, yeah, a bit more yeah like we're up now. We're, we're at it only a couple of years. Uh, I think we're about two hundred sheep that need to be sheared now every year, Aye. which is a fair saving. So they are actually. Are they, they what they call hair sheep or shedding sheep? The shedding sheep, uh, yeah, it's not really a fleece of wool to have. I suppose it is hair. It's like cattle, nearly. It's like a play right. like a coat of cattle to have on them. But they're real thick skin. You put your hand on them, so you're putting your hand on a fat bullet. Ah, it's a different wool. Different skin than a, than a than like a mule yo. The sheep put sheep put a lot of energy into growing a fleece of wool. Yeah. So you have the added bonus then with the easy cares that they're putting more energy into growing meat and uh, they're actually a fast growing breed but like any breed up there's good and good ones and bad for me personally i'd rather be breeding my own sheep than buying in we were buying in sheep for years once you start breeding your own you'll see the difference our sheep would be ran quite hard in big bunches like we have groups of three three to four hundred sheep with their lambs at the minute and he always needs to be fit they need to be good in the feet they need to have everything fair fairly right to keep driving. So at least when you're breeding your own, you can select towards that. You do over a space a couple of years. Yeah. You have, you have a sheep that'll suit your farm. And it soon improves the thing. It soon improves it, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That's part of the reason we chose the Easy Care, uh, to our self-replacing breed. There's others out there as well, like the Clins. And, yeah, yeah. You've then, used some of the Clins. I have, yeah, 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 yeah. How do you find them? I found the Clins pretty good. Um, I suppose the only reason we didn't stick at them was at the same time we were using the cleanser, we were using the easy cares. And they're pretty similar apart from the wool. Well, funny, that's the one thing when you mentioned that. Like, I love cleanse. It's a good time maybe to mention that's the type of sheep I have, purebred flock of cleanse. So, it's the one thing I don't like about my sheep is the wool. Yeah. yeah. And this byproduct that we're having and the hassle shear. Yeah. And the other problem I'm finding this time of year, we're towards the end of May now, we're coming into blow flying season, so prevention. So we're busy buying click, you might have seen that in my last video where putting click on the lambs, it's a very costly job when you have a lot of lambs. Yeah. Next thing is doing yolks, next thing is doing the hoggets that they're running on, so you're trying to prevent all these problems. So is the easy care the option where you have, obviously less external parasites, yeah. is blow I... flying a problem on them? No. Uh... I mean, like we're not pure easy care, but we have some pure yos. Most of the yos are half, either half e quarter easy care, half easy care, and some three quarter now. So, like we now, even if we go pure easy care, we will still dip our river. We will still, we'll never stop dipping the yos because any sheep can get scab. Yeah. And we don't buy in anything, but you can sit, birds bring scab in, and actually always find sheep do well after being dipped. Yeah. I just like doing them every year. I won't, that will always be the case. But as regards to click, like you know, what you can click now is up to three hundred euros. And they're still work, but them, they're, I don't actually like the word easy care. It's first of all, it's getting harder to get help, to get labour lambing, to get labour at uh, shearing. Like we're lambing inside at the moment, but I would say now in the next five to ten years we will have to move to outdoor lambing. Simply because of the labour shortage. Right. Getting the help at Getting lambing. the help at lambing. Yeah. Trying to run as many sheep as to one man 
if you can breed kind of a lowland yo that can do that and, and produce a lamb to 21 kilos, that's the aim, you know. And you have less labour costs, you have less problems, yeah. you know. And that's what it's all about, but it's, it's a big number. So you get to, yeah, the problems yeah, I find, yeah. the more sheep I get, the more the problems multiply. Yeah. And the old problem, or the old saying that farmers used to have, that I often enjoy the sheep's biggest enemy is the one standing beside yeah. it. So basically, you get into a bigger stock and yeah. raise. Yeah. Every all the problems multiply. Yeah. So how do you find, how do you manage it? Like you're quite highly stocked. Like yeah. What sort of numbers are you running? Three now. Well, like, yows and hoggets and rams. You know, with over a thousand on about two hundred acres of land. Yeah. So we're really over five yows to the acre. Yeah. That is fairly highly stocked. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we are housing here in the winter, or well, what yows are going in at the beginning of December, um, to save the grass for lamb. Yeah. And even if we did go out to a lamb, we would still house the sheep. Because right. no matter what you're doing, you need grass at lamb time. And probably the, the most important thing is to have that swore of grass. Uh, if you haven't got that, you're in with me. And when the rows, you mean? When, when the rows, yeah, disaster. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I can't do that at all. Yeah, I just, I just yeah. can't do it. That's if we let our sheep out with lambs, we don't feed, you know. Yeah. And yeah. That's the way it's always been. But that the secret again is that grass. Yeah. That's what as you mentioned. Yeah, like whether it's happens, the grass. Yeah, whether whatever way you're getting the sheep off ground, whether it's sending them away for grazing, putting them on turnips, or putting them on kale, or putting them in a the shed. It's all the same. Are you, it's all for the same results, you know. Yeah. So, and so you maybe in the future might house and let them out to lamb yeah. on, a, on a on good pasture. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 A good system too, I suppose. If your sheep, yeah, set up for it. yeah. If your sheep, yeah, that's it. Like, and if you're the old type of old, it can do it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. When I was small, we had Suffolk Shepherd Joes, for most people would have had that then. Great clumps of sheep. Yeah. Uh, not that many lambs out of them. A big, a big, a big good yo, lamb. A great lamb. Yeah. And, like, don't get me wrong, the great sheep. Um, then went to the, started buying horned yews from the west of Ireland and Sligo and Donegal and Kerry and bred our own mules and went down that way for years and had mule yews and put Texas around to them and bred the Texan mule yew, which is what we would have had up to recent, which is where we still have some. And they were great sheep, very happy with them. But we're still having to buy in seven or eight mules every year. We still weren't fully uh, closed, if you get me. You know, we're still buying in sheep. Yeah. And like that, the mules are hard. Hard, to, you know, they're expensive. Hard to get the ones you want yeah. at the right money. Probably, not to run down any sheep, but probably lifespan is an issue with the mule. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, what are you getting, four crops maybe? Yeah, look, they vary, but I mean, you could have yolks started to lose teeth after three or four years, yeah. which is... Doesn't suit a tightly run system. No, yours, no, no. Yeah. Which is another thing I've found now, with the tax across and them to do last a lot longer, maybe six years, you know, you'd be getting out of the yeah. There's so, some difference I find. I yeah. find out with my claims that the, the lifespan is good. Like, I have sheep seven and eight years yeah. still doing the job, but then age is starting to beat them, but six... Six years is about my cut off point, I let them off after that. Yeah. But the difference in a sheep, like the output you're getting from a sheep in the yeah. next to two years at the back end of our life, like that's, yeah. that can be the difference in making money. It, not that. It can, and it, like, like that again, especially if you're buying in, if you had to be buying in these mules every year, you want to be getting five or six years out to make your, your, your replacement rate. You're buying a hogger for 200 euros or maybe more to get a good one, you know? Yeah. And then they're not worth very much maybe when you go to kill them at the end of their life. Yeah. Look, they're great mothers and that's very little bad you could say about them. Yeah. At that stage we, were, we dabbled with the easy care on using them on your lambs and we were, that's kind of how we got hooked on them then and found the lambs don't look much for the first six weeks of their life. You, you could be disappointed looking at them but they suddenly seem to just come out of their skins a bit and Drive, you take know, off. yeah, take off, yeah, 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 yeah. and like very like, like at lambing, very little problem. The, like, not even the lambing end of it, but the getting up and sucking, like, is a huge 
Labour saving like. Well, if you've 900 sheep, yeah. I know myself, I've lambed about just over 300, we'll say this year. Getting a lamb up to try and get a suck. If you have to do that with many sheep, it'll put you off lamb, really. I would, yeah. You know, <laughs> would. Like, yeah. It actually would, though. It's yeah. the, you yeah. know, it's, the, it's just. It's well, you could be in the shed there and you could be doing that when there could be a sheep lamb in here and she might need that. You know, you, that's when you lose. You, Unless your bodies are around the place, that's when you lose them. But when you get over something like a sheep, it's very hard to run them on your own. Um, and to be full time farming at sheep, you need a lot of them. Yeah. You know, there's no point saying you don't, you do, unless you're pedigrees. And uh, some men might even argue with some money in them either, like, you know. Well, that's it, yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. Like, it any is, type yeah, of sheep yeah, farming yeah. is difficult to make. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the reality. It's hard to part time sheep farm as well, because yeah. to do it by your. Uh, you do, there is, no matter what sheep you have, there's a bit of work in them during the summer, it's not just lambing. It's a lovely day, we're after moving outside. I suppose the reason I'm here with Frank today is Balmoral Show. Mm. When I done the video on Balmoral Show, I had an awful lot of people asking, was there any hair sheep or shedding sheep? Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a hot topic. It is a hot topic at yeah. the minute. With shearers, as we mentioned earlier, when we were just chatting before we got the camera going, to get somebody to actually shear your sheep is getting more difficult. It's a it's a couple of days of uh, like here now, and you know it's it's a it takes a good while. It's a couple of days of work. Like there's a lot involved. You fill in the trailer, pack in the wool, and then you send your wool off, and you get twenty cent a kilo. That's right. It's harmless money, isn't it? Yeah. My father, uh, now when he was farming in his prime, wool was worth money. Mm. He it paid for the rent of the land. There you go. He got. It's okay. no wonder the the merino took off. I'd yeah. say in parts of the yeah. world because like you're you're getting big money. You're getting a lot more for wool than a. Well, in than, the than late 80s, early in the late 80s up to 1990, he said he was getting around four thousand yeah. pounds for wool. That, that was time. a lot of money back. And four thousand pounds. I don't know what it is now in euros, but it, it's, a, it's a heck of a lot more than four thousand euro. Anyway, and, and it would get you a lot more. I was worth a lot more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you yeah. could buy a farm of land back yeah. in with that kind of money. I think uh, the wool check, we had two and a half tonne of wool went 600 euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's harmless money, and you, it probably, is harmless money. you probably paid, what, Good. roughly a couple of thousand for shares. Yeah. yeah. So it's only a recent thing that wool yeah. has kind of diminished into. Well, sure, we didn't know how good we had it. So we, I remember we were getting 140 kilo, and we were complaining that time. And. Uh, <laughs> Which we'd have right to do. Yeah. Still wasn't enough for it, but, uh, yeah. but you were geez, bread, it was but a hell of a lot more than 20 cent. Like, <laughs> like all the farmers were born to cry anyway. Yeah, but look, yeah. uh, it is just one of them things yeah. that with costs going up, it's one of them things, is there a way maybe to walk around it? Like mm. Frank mentioned there earlier when we were in the shed about maybe cutting out the need for shearing and maybe improving that Worm resistance problem as well, which is a growing problem. Yeah, well, that's What's uh, the wee spotty lad? You've a wee spotty lad oh, in the my back. My dad has a few of them. They're the Dutch spotted. Oh, ones. Dutch spotted, right? He's a couple yeah. of them. There's a hobby, and I will be the run the ram lambs. We lamb our yo lambs as well, so right. they're very easy lambing, and, and they run with them. Uh, and yeah. then we have a few blue, blue Texans yeah. go with the yo lambs as well. We just find they work well. Lamb 220 yo lambs this year, and very little issues with them now. Yeah. Very happy with them. The lambs are good to get up and suck as well, you know. Yeah. And they're good, good hardy little lambs. Yeah. They wouldn't be born too big, but it's ideal for a hoggett. You don't want. You don't want a brute of a lamb. You don't want a brute of a lamb. So. But we're running 12 easy care rams at the minute, and we probably don't have enough work for them really. An easy care ram would have no problem tipping 100 sheep. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll they cover, will, they'll yeah, cover ground. Yeah. yeah, like we probably should have more sheep for them. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I suppose it's leaving you with a good compact lamb and it is, yeah. Why you have two fifty lamb in a yeah, few days. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly. And we like to get the lamb and done with as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um the old lambs drag it on a bit, but the main lamb and I I do find we get it done. years ago when I was starting out you had probably not enough rams and the lamb would stretch out maybe yeah, beyond yeah. four weeks and the the novelty kind of wears off and the motivation wears off yeah, and yeah. the casualties in them last few can be higher and they'll even the, the novelty whole wears off and for the ram as well I'd say and <laughs> 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 so, but he's healthy getting done like, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah like uh, we try and get the majority of the old lamb within three weeks so because after the third week, you're fairly tired now. So you're what's classified as a real sheep farmer. You're actually a lot of sheep at home, and you're working 
Yeah. Well, another sheep farmer. As I well. am. Yeah. 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 yeah we're outdoor lambing on the other farm. So. Right. But how, how many sheep are they running? Ah, oh, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Yeah. So you have nine hundred here to look after. Twelve hundred yeah, there. Yeah. So this is what you call a real sheep farmer now. I was actually looking on the census just yeah. to see how many farmers are uh, crazy enough to run this many sheep, and only one percent of all the sheep farmers in the country have more than five hundred sheep. So say there's a lot less with heading for a thousand sheep. Oh, it would uh, be, yeah, yeah. There's only, I think there's only 400 farmers that's over 500. Yeah. So how many is close to a thousand? I'd say you could count them on two Probably hands. less and less every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in what's classified as, uh, uh, what we do call, the Calvin man does call uh, good mead land. Mm. This, this would be exceptionally good land now in terms of what we're used to. We're in the poor, we're in the poor part of Mead. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but the, the funny thing is, the poor part of Mead is better land than the best land in Calvin, oh. you know. So, highly stocked, as we mentioned, mm. you're running almost a thousand head on 200, 200 acres. acres. Yeah. No winter grazing. No. So everything's kept here. Uh, Silage is all cut here. Your input costs have to be high when you run the system like that. It goes about 120 euros to keep a yo. And for the year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to have a prolific, a good you crop do. of lamb. You do, but just until, now, if you can, you know, if, if you're getting 120 for your lamb, it's not too bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it is costing that, but it's, that was, I think that was last year, and the costs were up last year with fuel, diesel, yeah. travelling around, stuff like that, like it really adds, adds up. up. Yeah. Well, sure, everything's going you up. You're, you're click, you're doses your yeah. vaccinations yeah. your contact gone. you're making silage has gone up yeah you know uh getting slurry spread everything gone up but the farm we have least has gone up in price as everywhere you know so it's hard to keep it's hard to know if that will we'll continue with that we might just cut back a bit and just yeah. farm our own ground we might be better off yeah it's something we're being we are thinking of yeah well, um, again with help being scarce help being scarce cut at. back to seven hundred or something like that but we'll yeah. see we'll see well farming's a funny one i find the uh, the law of diminishing returns seems to set in at a certain stage when you get so big the money left over nearly reduces yeah so it's just it's just hard to find that balance it is yeah i yeah. find it, it, it land is making well over 300 acre yeah, around here yeah, or yeah. more yeah you know and that's when they really well for a sheep enterprise yeah it, it gets unviable that's the problem um, yeah you know the other enterprises like dairy and tillage yeah. can justify it well the, well even the tillage man probably can't but the dairy man can yeah. he had a great year last year now it's getting hard at the minute as well so yeah. look they have lots of costs as well so uh yeah. and i mean they deserve all to get to work very hard yeah yeah, uh, yeah. So, a lot of hours clocked in yeah what i try to do is the maximise the amount of kilos per la of lamb you can produce for every hectare of land you have. So, yeah. you know, I'm trying to produce as many lambs as I can on my bit of ground and get them away yeah. at the best price I can. And that's how, and you know, that's why you, you need a yoda prolific and you need a lamb that's fast growing. Yeah. We do feed meal to lambs, like when we get after weaning. We definitely want all our ram lambs gone by September yeah. time. I just out of the system. Yeah. Because uh, we want to be building grass up to put rams out with yos, which is, you know, you need you need to have a bank of grass to take them yos then to, to point the house. And so you need to be building condition on the sheep from when she's yeah. weaned. Yeah. You can't have these lambs hanging around to uh, no. uh, no. compete with the yo. No. They're better gone. Last year I sold mine at stores and it worked well for me. Stores were mad money. Yeah. Yeah. Like I got yeah. 90 euro for 30 kilo lambs. I yeah. don't think I get it this year yeah. because a lot of men got burnt with paying big money for stores yeah, and yeah. Like you know the story yourself. Do you finish everything or are you... Um, generally what we do is the lambs from our yo lambs. So we generally, we gather up all them lambs and we will sell them as stores. That's what we did last year now and we gone very well with them. Like yourself, got great money for them. I so they're lambs from maybe smaller lambs from yo lambs yeah. as you mentioned so yeah. they're always going to be a little bit slower to get away yeah like but they'll you... suit somebody's system oh yeah of yeah of like they suit someone to, that would want to finish them up till the fall you... beyond the following christmas i try and keep the flock young yeah i know you have an old your older yo's are, but if you sometimes we will move yo's that will do one more year here could do two or three more years somewhere else mm. they might go to a slightly kinder place yeah i know we're in mead yeah. and I know I'm good lad, but it's not that. It's 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 still a tough enough spot for sheep. Yeah. 
because well, when you're highly stocked, you're highly it's tough, stocked. It's tough a high, it is a hard system, so yeah. a younger sheep does perform better. Yeah. So sometimes we will do that. We will sooner keep extra replacements and keep the flock young and keep moving yeah. them older sheep out of the yeah. system. And because the older sheep do give, can give a bit more trouble as well. You've had bigger tits and big elders and problems with lambs that you don't need. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the younger sheep, the milk well, the everything's tight. The everything's, you know, they're they're fitter and. Yeah. Yeah. They can handle it a bit better. Yeah. You always get to a certain stage, they do need to take it a bit easier. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, as you say, there is a space for them older sheep. Somewhere is a bit kind of maybe understart. Like yeah. There is somebody yeah. that oh, them there sheep is. Yeah. suit yeah. like. And yeah. people love them because, look, they do well for someone. Yeah, yeah well, they're, they're, I, I do always think those older sheep, if you've kept them that long and they're still viable, like they've obviously been good sheep to last that they time. They have, yeah. Like if there's another crop or two out of them, yeah. on a different system where they're willing to look after them a little yeah. bit better. And yeah, like there is there is There is a space for them. There is. Uh, something I might do is actually sell older sheep yeah. and try and keep younger stock for the reasons you mentioned. Yeah. It's easier when you get into numbers. It's right? easier when you get into numbers. And yeah, look, but I suppose back to the lambs, so that we usually will draft off about 300 old lambs that we will aim to keep. And if any of them go lame, they don't be kept. Yeah. They're put into a different group and they're for slaughtering. Yeah. And then we sell yo lambs private to a few local farmers that come every year for them. Yeah. So um, you're actually finding maybe a market for breeding, yeah, to produce yeah. breeding females yeah. for farmers. Well, it, yeah. if the, it's usually the Texel cross yo lambs that they do go for, but now there's been the odd easy care going to them and they seem very happy with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, but then the ram lambs all go to Navan basically. Uh, we finish them all, yeah. and even if we get down to less than a hundred, depending on the weather. If the weather stays good and there's lots of grass to stay out, but if if things get tight, we'll prioritise the grass for the oas and we'll house the ram lambs and we'll finish them inside. Yeah. But they will be getting out a little meal. Oh right, so yeah. uh, as yeah. much as they can. Yeah, eat. and a bit of bed. They actually wouldn't be going on. We actually put them in a straw shed and they'd be getting bed on straw. You find they do better than on the slats? Uh, well, we actually never put them on the slats. We just always put them on straw, and I suppose. The simple thing was we would not be feeding out straw, we just bed them and we keep them well bedded yeah. and they seem to nibble at the straw. But you don't actually feed them any roughage apart from the meal or and the yeah, straw? Yeah, just the straw. Right. Yeah. Like you could keep them on, run them on grass if you had the ground for them until the following spring and fatten them on, gra fatten them on grass, but then you've no grass for your yolks. You have a thousand sheep, you're not yeah. going to be able to do that. Yeah. 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 So you can't have it, you can't burn the candle from both ends. This is going to be a long video, so I'm going to split it in two. So that's it for today. Check in next week. We'll have part two for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.